USC still joining us. Sister Catherine Moffitt, good morning to you. God bless you. Sister Paula Hubbard, uh, Brenda Alexander, good morning. Sister Brenda, God bless you. Ariel Hubbard, good morning and God bless you. And I see Sister Jeree joining us on the line too. All of you who are still joining us, still joining, still joining. Uh, we thank God and praise God for your presence on today, joining us in this virtual worship experience where we are still being reminded that in the name of our God, we still have very real victory. Amen. Let us have a word of prayer, shall we? Now consecrate me to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. My soul is looking up with a steadfast hope, not my will, but thine will be done. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me, draw me nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. To you, God, we give honor, glory, and praise. And now, God, by your word, save the sinners and strengthen the saints. In Jesus' name we pray. The church says amen and amen again. LaShawn Butler, good morning to you. Y'all are still coming in. Uh, Sister Bridget, all the way from halfway around the world. Good morning, Sister Bridget, Sister Irene, out in East Texas. Good morning. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I will come back to my Facebook live screen, but I got to leave you for a moment. Amen. To go to my Bible app. But as soon as I get out the Bible app, I'm gonna come right back on the Facebook screen. So if you are talking to me, Amen. Shout your amens and your raised hands. I'll be able to see them. Amen. As we preach and prepare to preach and present what thus saith the Lord. Once again in the book of Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. I want to go back to the place where I left off last Sunday and go down to verse number 3. Ezekiel chapter 37, beginning at verse number 3. The word of God says, And he, God, he the Lord, said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Again, he said to me, Prophesy to these dry bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Again, it's verse number four that caught my attention and arrest our captivity on today. Verse number four again, he said to me, Prophesy to these dry bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is our series, Live Again, the Live Again series. This is part two in the series. I want to subtitle this text, The Victims in the Valley. <clears throat> Amen. You may be seated in the presence of, of the Lord. The, the, the victims in the in the valley. There we go. The victims in, in the valley. In our exegetical excursion on last Sunday, we established that Ezekiel is in the valley. Yes, he is a prophet, but he is in the valley. Yes, he is communicating with God, but he is still in the valley. Yes, he is having visions, but he's having them while he is in the valley. Not just here in the text, but all throughout the book that bears his name, Ezekiel is in the valley. His wife died from a sudden sickness. Emotionally, he's in the valley. He could not mourn his wife's death because as soon as she died, he is carried away into exile in the land of the Chaldeans. Personally, he is in the valley. Jerusalem falls apart and its sacred places are destroyed by the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar religiously. He is in the valley. He's enslaved in exile when God calls him to be a prophet. Spiritually, he's in a valley. In Ezekiel, 
Ezekiel is the mouthpiece who must declare to his own people that Nebuchadnezzar, the one who destroyed their promised land, is an instrument being used by God. So socially, they put him in a valley. And so when Ezekiel chapter 37 opens by saying that the Spirit of God led Ezekiel to a valley in a vision, the truth is that the Spirit is only leading him to a place metaphorically where he has already been emotionally, personally, spiritually, religiously, and socially. Ezekiel has been in the valley. And like Ezekiel, we have been in the valley too. Yes, we are only 10 days into a new year, but we have been in a valley. Normally, we enter new years expecting new years to be better than the old year. But no, nope, we enter 2021 in the same place where we spent most of 2020, right in the valley. And as people of African ancestry living in America, Epiphany Day, January 6, 2021, reminded us of just how deep and dark the valley is. Epiphany Day, for those of you who may not know, Epiphany Day is celebrated every day by Christians on January the 6th. Because Christmas is celebrated for 12 days. I know you tried to have your Christmas tree down by January 1st. But Christmas is celebrated for 12 days. December 25th through January 5th. Those are the 12 days of Christmas. The January 6th Epiphany Day. The start of the season when Jesus begins to and people have epiphanies that he is more than a regular child. He just may be the Messiah. On oh, Epiphany Day, on January 6, 2021, we thought we were out of the valley because Raphael Warnock, a black man, a black preacher, and a Democrat, was elected a U.S. Senator from the state of Georgia. We thought we were out of the valley because John Osnoff, another young Democrat, was also elected a senator from Georgia, meaning the U.S. Senate, y'all, will have 50 Democrats and 50 Republicans, and our sister Kamala Harris will be the tiebreaker. We, we thought we were out of the valley because the Congress was in session to confirm the election of Joe Biden as president. Just one of them, but they would have shot and killed all of 
people were in D.C. protesting in the aftermath of George Floyd's death in June of last year. Capitol Police and National Guard were all over the place in full riot gear and they wouldn't give black folk an inch, but they let white people take over the darn Capitol building while Congress was still in session. These differences in our treatment are a constant reminder to people of African ancestry in America that we are still in a valley. And let me be clear, let me be clear, let me be clear that many of those who vandalized and looted in the capital called themselves white Christian nationalists. Let me be clear, let me be clear, y'all. White Christian nationalists is nothing but a new age name for the Ku Klux Klan. Because to join the Klan, you had to be white. No colors allowed. You had no Catholics, Jews, Muslims, or anything else could be admitted. And you had to be a nationalist born in America and brainwashed to believe in American exceptionalism. And so folk today who call themselves white Christian nationalists are just giving a new name to the Ku Klux Klan. And the Ku Klux Klan reminds us the white Christian in the valley. So even though we are 10 days into a brand new year like Ezekiel, we have been reminded that we are still in the valley. But not only are we in the valley like Ezekiel, watch it, but we are also victims like Ezekiel too. Uh-huh. Ezekiel was a victim of a government that exalted greed over God. you are the 
first one and the only one to ever go through what you are going through. But believe me, others have already gone through it too. I know you think your marriage, your money, and your ministry are the only ones going through, but you're not in the valley by yourself. You're home, your health, your hurt, or your feelings of hopelessness. You're not the only one who is going through that Revealing who really wants to 
destroy this country. He was revealing who really doesn't care about law enforcement or law and order. He was revealing the real terrorists, the real anarchists, the real threats, the real problems that need to be dealt with. And just like he said to Ezekiel, I know the way, but you got to do the work. So watch the text again. Watch the text again. When Ezekiel says, Yada, you know and you show, God's next word to Ezekiel is prophesy. Not let me show you, but prophesy. Not let me do some work, but God says prophesy. In other words, God says, yes, Ezekiel, I do know the answer to your question. Yes, Ezekiel, I do know the way. But in order to accomplish the way, you, Ezekiel, have got to do some work. The text is talking today to some people who always and only want to talk about what God knows. The text is talking today to some folk who only like to talk about God knows my heart. Yes, he does, but you got to do some work to get your heart. to let other 
people know what we are thinking. But no all is not to speak by your rumination, but to speak by inspiration. Why? Because your education is inadequate to teach you all things. Your investigation is insufficient to reveal to you all things. Your thoughts are limited to you and you don't know all things. So when God tells Ezekiel to prophesy, he's not telling him to speak his education, investigation, or rumination. He's telling him to speak what thus saith the Lord. Because you may be in the valley surrounded by death, but the word God is giving you may be a word of life. And if God is giving you life, then you got to speak the word of life. I'm trying to help somebody listening on today that I know your situation may look dead, but if God says prophesy to it, then God is telling you to speak life. If God tells you to prophesy, stop calling your husband lazy and start speaking your boo thing to life. If God is telling you to prophesy, stop calling your wife worthless and start speaking your woman into life. If God tells you to prophesy, stop calling your children bad choices and start speaking life and watch God change them. Stop talking about your job in a, as a place of death and speak your job to life. If your money is funny, don't talk about it like it's meaningless, but talk your money into life and receive God's favor. If your friends are funny acting, stop talking to them foolishly, but talk your friends into life. If your church's doors are closed, don't talk your church into death, but talk your church into life. Don't you talk your future into death, but if God says prophesy, talk your future into life. Talk your health into life. Talk your family into life. Talk your church into life. Talk your neighborhood into life. If God says prophesy, talk it into life. It may look bad, feel bad, and be bad. It may look dead, feel dead, and be dead. But the truth of the matter is that it ain't dead until God says it is dead. I don't care what the doctors say and what the demographics say. It ain't dead until God says it's dead. That's why I have a problem with people who always want to plan the funeral. They'll call me and say, Pastor Jimmy is in the hospital. Pastor Jimmy is on life support. Pastor Cousin Jimmy, the doctor said he don't have long to live. And we want to know, Pastor, can we have the funeral at the church? Will you preach the eulogy for Cousin Jimmy? And whenever they start talking like that, I always respond, I don't talk about funerals until somebody is dead. I don't care what the doctors say, the medicine says, or what the statistics say. I don't start planning for death 
into your health. I speak life into your finances. I speak life into your children. I speak life into your marriage. I speak life into your job. I speak life wherever you go that I shall not live, but I shall not die rather, but we all shall live and declare the works of the Lord. Is there Throughout. 
pursue. But God says, I will encourage you, enliven you, and quicken you. The government will give you grief.
are not what the world has labeled you to be. You are what God says you are. God says you are loved. God says you are not alone. And God says you are his. God says that you are his son. You are his daughter. You're his child. And you are somebody. And if you don't really have a relationship with the Lord on today, but you need one and you want one, just type it's me in the comment section. And before this day is over, one of our preachers on staff here will reach out to you through Facebook to pray with you and to lead you into your own relationship with the Lord. If you don't know him, if you don't know God, in a relationship with God, if you don't have a place you call your church home, just type, it's me in the comments. It will lead you, it will guide you in the right way. We can reach you through Facebook to pray with you, to encourage you, and to instruct you on how to be what God is calling you to be. You may be in the valley, and you may be the victim in the valley, but in the name of Jesus, you can have the victory. Don't let this chance pass you by. If you need that relationship with the real Lord, then just type this me, and one of our preachers will talk to you and reach out to you before this day is over. Amen, amen. It's time to live again. You've lived in death. You've lived in defeat. You've lived in do nothingism. But now it's time for you to live again in 2021. And we want to help you live with the Lord. Just type your name. Just type this me. And we'll reach out to you before this day is over. Amen.